All right, so I was going to do this in two separate videos, but I decided to make this into one video instead to make it all easier. We have a ton of things to talk about. We have the rumored Netflix series. We have the rumored movie. And around 4 a.m., something incredible happened released by Capcom that I'm super excited to share with you guys. Let's move on to the Netflix series and what this movie is essentially going to be about, what we know about it in terms of these rumors. And like always, each and every piece of information I will give you will be in the description below let's start with the rumor netflix series so this article is actually by kanan hopefully i said that right and this website is called geekvibesnation.com but it says constantine film expands the resident evil universe with rumored new film and netflix series and they kind of made the points and bulletin points to see what you know what to expect it says we have obtained some additional information regarding the resident evil series that fans might find interesting remember this is all rumored until announced officially so it says start recording in january next year in South Africa, a sequel series with the chase scene where Sophia Marcus is chased by three zombie dogs. I believe she is James Marcus's daughter. The hunter will be introduced in a scene where the monstrous decapitates survivors in a camp. Sophia faces the monster with a shotgun. An electrifying fight between Sophia and a giant lion took place in one of the episodes and she will face him with just a knife. Spiders are scarier this time. A sea octopus monster with multiple tentacles appears in a submarine scene. Sophia discovers that her father was cloned and seeks revenge. Sophia also falls in love with Catherine, a Thai refuge. There will be references to herbs and sprays from the game. Sophia seeks revenge for her father's death and goes after antiviruses in Europe. Evolve zombies use machine guns and rocket launchers, oh god. There will be a scene with a flamethrower, and it seems like they're going for more of the Netflix approach, um, because that done so well. The only thing I really, really liked about that series was Lance Reddick, who was Albert Wesker. May he rest in peace. I think he did a wonderful job with the material he was given, but everything else just seems just like a blur to me. I don't remember much of the show. But now let's move on to the rumored movie, which is supposed to be a prequel film, and it's apparently exploring like some of the origins of the franchise and it's going to be a prequel of welcome to raccoon city so it says following the release of resident evil welcome to raccoon city in 2021 constantine film is now producing a prequel that will delve into the events of resident evil zero set for a 2025 release the film promises to stay true to the game's narrative offering fans a faithful adaptation while weaving in elements from the broader resident evil lore so key details of the prequel film location and timeline the production is taking place in canada and will continue until December this year. Fans can expect to hear more about the cast by October, which is okay. That's cool, I guess. The budget. The film is set to be a substantial 30 million production, indicating a significant investment in bringing the game's intense atmosphere to life. Hmm, we should see about that. I feel like they've said the same thing with Welcome to Raccoon City, and it just felt extremely compressed with all of these kind of storylines just being crammed together in one movie character focus the story will center on billy cohen a convict with a murky past giving audiences a deeper understanding of his character you know we do have a rumored resident evil zero remake so maybe they're doing this because of that kind of to make billy cohen a bit more popular and kind of ready for a remake version of billy cohen who knows now this is what kind of um threw me off a bit because they did say they were going to make a faithful adaptation and this is the inclusion of Ada Wong to create a seamless narrative bridge with Welcome to Raccoon City. Ada Wong will be introduced, adding complexity to her character's journey in the Resident Evil universe. Now, if you guys do not know, Ada Wong has never been in Resident Evil Zero. So this is already not a faithful adaptation to Resident Evil Zero, but maybe it could be good. Who knows? Um, then it says faithful adaptation after, you know, talking about the inclusion of Ada Wong. Uh, fans can look forward to a film that honors the original Resident Evil Zero game while incorporating strong references to other titles in the franchise. And that's the little thing I'm afraid of. If you start referencing other games inside of your Resident Evil Zero movie, then it's going to feel like Welcome to Raccoon City. They did add elements from Resident Evil 2, Resident Evil 1, um, Resident Evil Code Veronica. You know, the movie was basically all over the place, but we shall see. We shall see when it comes out. But yeah, this is pretty much it when it comes to the film side of Resident Evil, but I want to talk to you guys about something exciting that actually happened at 4 a.m which actually dropped at 4 a.m 
Um, I was actually half asleep when I found out about this information. I didn't want to make a video then because I will sound like a zombie, no pun intended. But if you guys do not know, at 4 a.m., GOG released this. We now have Resident Evil bundles for Resident Evil 1 that you can currently download. The bundle does contain Resident Evil 2 and Resident Evil 3 Nemesis, but those are going to be available down the line in the future. And yes, this is only for PC. This is only for GOG. For those who do not know what GOG is, it's basically another application where you essentially don't need to be online to play these games. So in my personal opinion, it makes it a lot more prominent than Steam because you don't necessarily have to be online to play these games, unlike Steam that does have DRM. And plus it helps the cause of preserving these titles as well. And it's super exciting. The price range is going to be $25 for the trilogy. Again, you can only download the very first game, but they did say Resident Evil 2 and 3 will be available in 2024 at some point. So I know what you guys are asking. Are we getting a remastered version? Are we going to get some changes throughout these games? Yes, I will answer that here and it says we're going to get full compatibility with windows 10 and windows 11 obviously all four localizations of the game included english german french japanese improved direct x game render new rendering options window mode um, v-sync gamma correction integer scaling um, anti-aliasing and more so that's already a pretty big change there um, improved timing of the cutscenes, improved game video player, improved game registry settings, issue free game exit and task switching full support for modern controllers. So a lot of people did see this coming because apparently on the 18th of June, the PC version for Resident Evil was rated in Europe. So then people were kind of speculating, oh, why is that happening? Why exactly is that happening? And we finally know why. It's because these games are finally coming officially to the PC, not only on the PC, but it's on GOG, which is probably a an extremely convenient platform to be on because you don't have to be connected to the internet to play these games and i that's 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 incredible but again i will leave the link in the description so you guys can pick these up so if you want more of these collections guys i suggest you buy these um let capcom know that you want more of these uh, remasters and collections but i do want to talk about the fact that this isn't on console um we're halfway there i can say that i feel like to have something like this happen it was more like a group effort um i feel like a lot of console players out there especially on social media were very very vocal about wanting a remaster of some sort because they don't have access to these titles so i think it's very important for these games to also come out on console as incredible i do think this is i still think we're only halfway there only because you know console players are still left out with no remasters or any way to purchase this besides you know the first resident evil game on the ps5 that you can only access to the premium playstation plus which to me in my opinion is probably the worst way to own a resident evil game is to pay monthly so guys if you can support this support this 100 this will let capcom know that yes we want more of these remasters and i cannot stress how important this is because there are a lot of people who do argue on social media who do argue on youtube saying that you know they wish they had a remaster of some sort well this is your opportunity like you guys have no idea how important this can be because if you do end up buying this if this does end up doing um, good in Capcom eyes, we may see more collections. It's a high probability that if this does well, we're going to see more collectors in the future or collections, I should say. For example, we won Outbreak, we won Code Veronica, you know, etc. So this is definitely a step in the right direction. And this can tremendously help the idea of these titles actually coming to modern consoles because let's let's be honest here um consoles if it weren't for console players we would not have resident evil if it were not for the ps1 resident evil would not be popular as it is today so i feel like they are fully deserving of a resident evil trilogy and i know it's in the ps5 premium service but again it's a premium service they can choose to literally pull the plug on that game and you won't have access to this title again but that's the whole point of gog and what that does is you actually keep these games and you don't have to be connected online to keep them or to play them but again i'm going to sound like a broken record over and over again this is how you actually get the higher ups attention even if it's adding it to your wish list it still lets them know that you're interested so even if you can't buy it currently uh, make it account and just add it to your wish list just do that at least 
if you don't even own a PC, if you are for the idea, just make an account and add it to your wish list. Because Capcom 100% will use this as reference if you guys want to see older stuff in modern platforms. They will use this specifically as their reference. And not only this, guys, but if you guys end up doing this, if this actually becomes successful, other companies will probably pick this up and be like, wow, we should release a Parasite Collectors. We should release a Dino Crisis. So this can actually expand to other companies and to other games as well, which is crazy. But let me know what you guys think about the series, about the film, about the trilogy actually coming to a modern platform finally. If you like the content, make sure to like the video and if you're new to the channel guys, welcome and be sure to subscribe and most importantly, make sure to be nice to someone you'll most likely make their whole week or their whole month. But I'm gonna catch you guys in the next one. Peace.